Shiloh, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Dave. Uh, it's always my pleasure to be with you. Well, this morning, Tiziana reported data from the clinical study on the nasal administration of forlamumab, and that was for COVID-19 patients in Brazil. Talk to us first about the drug itself, and then talk to us about the data and why you're excited about it. The upfront, uh, Dave, I must tell you that I'm uh, excited. I'm delighted to see the positive effect. Forlamumab is unique anti-CD3 antibody. Keep in mind, this is the only antibody which is fully human anti-CD3 antibody. And it is absolutely important for long-term treatment that you have antibody that does not produce immune reaction. We have completed phase one trial with Foraluma with oral as well as nasal. And what we reported earlier was that treatment with oral or nasal with, anti, uh, with Foraluma did not produce the toxicities that are so commonly observed when antibodies are given intravenously. Therefore, this is a totally new approach, alternative way of treatment of uh, these patients. So nasal administration of foralumab, particularly in this trial, is important because virus enters through nose via breathing and it inflames the nasal mucosa and respiratory tract. So therefore, we believe that nasal administration of foralumab might be able to suppress inflammation in the nasal tract and respiratory tract. And that is what we are observing, that following treatment with foralumab nasally, there is rapid improvement in sense of smell and taste. And that also results in uh, reduction in uh, lung inflammation. And that is what you want to see in the trial. And we are very delighted to see these results. And this technology, the nasal platform, was developed by Howard Weiner of Harvard University is on your board of advisors, correct? Yes, uh, uh, Professor Harvard Weiner is uh, one of the top five people in the world. And he was the discoverer of this alternative routes of administration of uh, uh, anti-CD3, uh, such as oral or nasal. Our patent uh, on oral is already granted, and this is the first ever patent issued in this area in immunotherapy. So this is a very exciting development, and uh, we believe if any one of our technologies, core technologies in nasal, oral, or inhalation, uh, if they are successful, this young know, life sciences could be in, uh, in billions. So the, to, to be clear, are there any other uh, drugs treating COVID-19 that are delivered nasally other than yours? So there are a uh, uh, couple of examples where vaccines, nasal vaccines uh, have been uh, uh, evaluated. I don't know the data, uh, but our approach is uh, unlike vaccine. Our approach is to modulate immune system such that your body can fight against uh, the virus. This is very important because you're modulating the immune system your body is strengthened, body defense is strengthened, and therefore it could fight with COVID-19 and also newly identified variant uh, in United Kingdom or South Africa or Brazil. Shalou, is it true also that, that, you're, uh, that this drug could also treat other viruses? Yes, they've, uh, you know, one thing common in all these viruses, whether it is COVID-19 or MERS or SARS, or even ARDS, is the inflammation in lung. And that lung inflammation is primarily due to dysregulation in immune system. And it is also shown uh, by number of studies that levels of uh, T regulatory cells, which are called Tracs, and in a way they are body defenders, are depleted in these patients. Therefore, our approach to uh, modulate immune system and to stimulate uh, levels of Tracs should be applicable to all viruses, including the newly identified uh, variants of COVID-19 in South Africa, Brazil, and the United Kingdom. Shalil, what was the rationale for including Flamomab plus the uh, dexamethasone cohort? Yeah, Dave, you know, when we were planning for this trial, uh, we realized that in Brazil, most of these patients, uh, as soon as they are diagnosed with COVID-19, they start taking uh, steroids. So I said, uh, you know, in order to figure out if the effect is primarily because of foralumab, we included 
this as a comparator uh, for alumab plus dexamethasone. And if you compare the data between for alumab and for alumab plus dexamethasone, you will see that the effect is mainly coming from for alumab, nasally administered for alumab. For lumab, and that was very important for us to find out. And for that reason, we included uh, this cohort. And what was the significance of the lung CT scans between those who took the Fahablumab and those who did not? Why is, uh, what, what was the difference and is it, how significant is it? First of all, Dave, uh, I was uh, delighted to see that the effect of uh, for lumab alone was twice as much as compared to control. Why is it important? It is very important, as we know, that in COVID-19 patients, uh, uh, there is hyperinflammation in lung. That leads to respiratory uh, failure and death. So therefore, inhibiting the inflammation in lung is most important to cure these patients. And within 10 days, it's like once they dose in for 10 days, the effect was twice as much com uh, as compared to control, which is significant. And I, I think it's very exciting data for us. Shalu, why is the data on re the reduction of IL-6 and the CRP levels indicative of the positive effects of, of your drug? So Dave, uh, IL-6 is interleukin-6. It's a pro-inflammatory cytokine, which is produced in all inflammation disease. In COVID-19, IL-6 level is excessive, and that is the mother cause of uh, lung inflammation, leading to respiratory failure and death. CRP is C-reactive protein. C-reactive protein is excessive in all inflammatory disease. So therefore, we looked at if there is a positive effect of furalumab in suppressing the inflammation, therefore, we should also see the uh, reduction in uh, uh, IL-6 and CRP. Indeed, that is what we uh, observed, that following for alumab treatment, there was uh, impressive reduction in levels of uh, IL-6 and CRP, which is indicative of the fact that for alumab is suppressing lung inflammation. Now, in your quote in the press release, you mentioned that the safety data will be useful for the upcoming phase two trial for multiple sclerosis. Can you explain uh, this further? Yeah, Dave, uh, you know, we, we are planning for phase two trial with nasally administered uh, for alumab for treatment of secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. And in our phase one trial, we had done uh, once a day dosing only for five days. But in phase two trial, our clinical uh, design is uh, dosing for uh, 14 days. Therefore, this additional data of once a day dosing for 10 days, showing absolutely no adverse event, is absolutely critical for us. And we are delighted to see that nasal administration with forolumab did not produce any of those SAEs and treatment was well tolerated. What's the next step for your COVID-19 clinical program? So Dave, as you know, this trial was small and exploratory, and this was done in uh, Brazil. Our uh, next step is to have a uh, trial done in larger number of patients so that we can have a statistical evaluation. We are also thinking of doing this trial in the uh, U.S. as well. And therefore, we are still in uh, planning stage. I'm waiting for uh, the complete analysis of the data, and that uh, will be useful for planning the next step. We will, uh, we will update our investors as soon as uh, we have a perfect plan. Excellent. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you very much.